going to have here. So I'll be representing the electoral board and uh, conducting this one. But uh, I'm very happy also to give the welcoming words of today's meeting, let's say, to Laurier de Jong. So Laurier, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. To just a few words um, on behalf of the steering committee um, to um, uh, thank all of the candidates uh, for applying and for, for participating in this very important um, democratic uh, process. Uh, um, it's very important uh, for our organization uh, uh, to have these elections and uh, to have uh, courageous uh, uh, and willing candidates uh, like all of you. So uh, thank you so much uh, for applying. And I'd also like to uh, thank um, wholeheartedly uh, the members of the electoral board. Uh, I know that it has been challenging this year because of the changes in venue of the, of the conference and also because of, um, <clears throat> because of the changes of the format as well of the, uh, of the conference. Uh, and having to uh, do the voting online uh, has made things more complicated, but everything is under control. And I really uh, would like to uh, thank you all for, you know, for um, doing this and, and also thank uh, Gabriel uh, Desidrado uh, for, uh, for, for doing all of the uh, hard work uh, organizing the elections electronically, because it's a, it's, it's a very, it's a very big challenge and, uh, Gabriel has just been fantastic. So thank you so much, uh, Gabriel. Uh, we really appreciate all the hard work that you've done uh, behind the scenes. Uh, if only people knew, <laughs> they would appreciate it as much as me. <laughs> so thank you so much. And I'd like to uh, wish good luck to all of the candidates. Uh, and I'll now hand it over to you, Monica. Thank you so much, Gloria. Uh, and really also very big thank you to you for helping us through this process. It's the first for all of us <laughs> on the electoral board, I guess. And very big thank you also to Gabrielle for helping it with everything. It, she has been a tremendous help, really. Uh, with me today, I'm very happy to also introduce you another member of the electoral board who is here today. So Patricia Zimberia, who is representing the International Association for Falconry and Conservation of Bird of Prey. So uh, would you like to say also hello to everyone? Uh, thank you, Monica, and uh, thank you to all uh, to be there. Yes, thank you so much for your help also. We also have two other members of the electoral board who sa sadly can't be present today, but they are uh, Annie Casimir Kingston, Chukunuel, who is from the Center for Peace Building and Poverty Reduction among African Indigenous Peoples, and also Barbara Barbvetera, who is from Cross Culture Foundation of Uganda. So sadly, they can't be here today, but probably they are all crossing their fingers for you. So um, just a few reminders for the forum members just before we start with the presentations. So a few things to remember. So the steering committee members I elected for a two-year period and can be reelected once. The mandate of a steering committee member shall start at the end of the session during which he, uh, they were elected and shall end in two years later at the end of the IGAC session. So you know the all that uh, this is how long the period is for two years. I hope that you're all well aware of what you are <laughs> candidating for. <laughs> so the registration for the voting, uh, the link, will be sent to one designated email for each accredited NGO. Please be sure to also check your spam folders because these kinds of letters tend to go into the spam always. So uh, all the NGOs have to also register to vote and they have to do it through the website of the ICH NGO forum and they can register until the 14th December, 9 a.m. Paris time. So until tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. So please do register as fast as possible. I know that a lot of the NGOs have already registered. Thank you so much for that. And uh, in order to register, you have to know the name of your NGO, NGO that I do hope that you all know, and also the registration number of the NGO that you can find by checking your file on the UNESCO ICH website. So these two things are necessary to register for the voting. I will also put the voting link in the Zoom for everyone who needs it, but you can also find it on the ICH NGO forum website. 
in the news category. And only the NGOs who submit an email ID through this form will receive a voting link. If you don't register, it, you won't receive the voting link. So please do. And also, as I mentioned, check the spam folder, of course. The voting period starts Tuesday morning. So that is tomorrow on the 14th of December at 10 a.m. Paris time. And it will last until the morning, of, until noon, December 15th. So 12 o'clock noon, not at midnight. So you have exactly 26 hours to vote. Please take care of that. That should be enough time for you all. And uh, of course, votes are anonymous. And each NGO can vote for only one candidate per electoral region. So there are more candidates in some regions. Please make your choice there. The results will be announced by the electoral board, by myself, on Wednesday, the 15th of December, during the General Assembly on the ICH NGO forum. So also, please, I will also put the link in the Zoom afterwards. And please come and listen to the results and all the candidates who are elected in the steering committee, you will be invited also to deliver a short speech to the forum members at that time. So please prepare a small thank you speech. And all, of course, candidates for the steering committee are chosen by the from them who receive the most votes and they will be elected to the ICH NGO steering committee. And if it happens that two or more candidates from all the same region receive the same number of votes, and as the voting is only online this year, a second round will not be organized and the candidate will be selected through a draw of lots by a person designated by the electoral board. So please make your choices wisely. So um, thank you for the listening to my careful notes. Please, I hope that everyone made notes and will also register. I will also remember remind it at the end of the session. But I'm very happy to come to the part where we can he hear the introductions from the candidates. And I really kindly ask all the candidates, you have 10 minutes to present yourself. Please, it is your possibility to do it a bit shorter, but please respect everyone's time and the maximum is 10 minutes. If anyone has any questions for the candidates, then you may enter them in the chat room or you can answer, ask them after the presentation. There is a possibility to ask two or maximum three questions. That's all the time we're gonna give for the questions. And of course, I will remind all of you uh, to act in a respectful and ethical manner towards all candidates during the presentation and in the chat box. So please be kind and turn off your microphones when someone else is presenting. And of course, the election is a democratic process. And we insist on ensuring that it follows the ethical principles of the forum. So good luck to all of you. And uh, I'm very happy, happy to introduce you the first candidate. I'm really sorry if I pronounce some, some names wrong. I'm also kind of put in the chat and also on the website can be found all the introductions and CVs of the candidates. Please check them. And I'm very happy to introduce to you the first uh, presenter today, who is from the African region. So it's Seko Berta from Mali Cultural Heritage Agency. So Seko, are you with us today now? Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Thank you. You may start. You have 10 minutes. Okay. I appreciate Thank you. My name is Seko Berta. Uh, I am the executive director of Mali Cultural Heritage Agency. And if I may, I would like to share my screen with you. Thanks. Mali Cultural Heritage, uh, je vais uh, m'exprimer en français. I, I would uh, uh, do my presentation in, in French. Can I ask you, sorry, to please put yeah. on the full screen of your presentation? Uh, yeah, I, I will do my presentation in French. The <laughs> slides are already in English, if I may. Yes, please. Can you okay. please put the uh, slides on full screen? We can see them small. So in the right hand corner, right next to the percentage, there is the presentation uh, button. A bit to the right. Mm. And down. May I uh, uh, stop sharing the screen first? And then okay. full screen. What's helped now? 
No change. Really it's, full, it's, it's full screen now. Uh, no, it's not. See, yes. We can see it in a smaller version, but I believe we can manage. So please start. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Je m'appelle Sekou Berthier. Je suis le directeur exécutif de l'Agence du patrimoine culturel du Mali. Et notre NG a été créé le 28 septembre 2007. Et nous apprécions que il y a le, la Convention de 2003 qui existe, qui a un organe de gouvernance qui est le, le comité de pilotage. Qu'est-ce que nous faisons Notre mission, elle est omniprésente. Nous travaillons à construire un monde durable tout en protégeant et en promouvant, euh, oui, en protégeant, en protégeant et en promouvant aussi le patrimoine culturel immatériel. Euh, notre mission, notre travail de mission est continu pendant que il, il repose fondamentalement sur la transmission euh, durable du patrimoine culturel immatériel aux futures générations. Nous travaillons avec tous les, les groupes d'intérêt, toutes les parties prenantes, et particulièrement avec les communautés euh, à la base et les collectivités territoriales. Euh, nous œuvrons aussi euh, avec leur pratique du patrimoine immatériel. En y faisant, nous avons un programme phare de maison du patrimoine qui est construit de sorte à pouvoir accompagner le processus de transmission tout en euh, recréant le passé dans le présent, en redynamisant et en mettant en valeur les pratiques du patrimoine culturel et matériel au Mali et au-delà du Mali, des frontières transnationales. Euh, notre travail fondamental ne se limite pas seulement à identifier, à documenter et à préserver, à protéger euh, les sites historiques, les places et les euh, sites culturels ou culturels, mais euh, nous travaillons avec toutes les communautés de manière avec leur activité transversale et notre travail de base aussi comporte Euh, un ensemble euh, de stratégies pour mobiliser un collectif euh, de ressources afin de pouvoir renforcer euh, les capacités à travers les communautés, tout en protégeant et en promouvant aussi la diversité des expressions culturelles et surtout en exploitant les narratifs euh, d'intronisation des autorités traditionnelles. Ensuite aussi, Euh, la culture de construction des maisons et surtout avec euh, leur technique de décoration. Euh, notre approche, elle est multidisciplinaire et nous œuvrons de manière à avoir toutes les voies hein, avec les chercheurs, les praticiens et les euh, professionnels, mais surtout, surtout, euh, la voie des communautés euh, à la base et le genre en mobilisant et les femmes et les jeunes femmes. Nous œuvrons aussi à construire des partenariats durables avec euh, euh, l'Université de Régon, l'Université de Bamako et tous les groupes qui sont actifs dans le domaine du patrimoine immatériel. Nous avons aussi le privilège de pouvoir animer quelques débats virtuels qui se rapporte à la protection et à la conservation et à promouvoir aussi le patrimoine culturel et matériel. Euh, à titre d'exemple, le 7 octobre dernier, nous avons pris part maintenant au festival en ligne euh, de la cérémonie du Jinjun Award. Je sais qu'il y a une question autour de laquelle je suis attendu. Pourquoi voudrais-je euh, euh, être élu comme membre du comité de pilotage Aujourd'hui, nous savons que euh, le comité de pilotage reste indéniablement un des organes de gouvernement de la Convention de 2003. Et être membre du comité de pilotage exige 
un don généreux, hein, de travail de volontaire. Et sur la base de ma courte expérience en tant que membre intérimaire, représentant du groupe 5A, l'Afrique, je suis en mesure de vous dire qu'il s'agit maintenant vraiment d'une mission excitante. Euh, il existe aussi un esprit de responsabilité et d'équipe. Et je suis déterminé à accroître la participation des ONG du continent ou du groupe Afrique en facilitant le recrutement d'ONG non encore accréditées. Par exemple aussi, il y a aussi cette ambition croissante de pouvoir mobiliser le partage des expériences pour construire durablement l'organisation. Notre organisation, il s'agit du forum du, euh, euh, des ONG du, euh, du PCI, pour apporter un changement profond afin de pouvoir prendre en charge euh, et contribuer à la mise en œuvre durant la Convention de numéro 3. Le travail de cartographie de l'expertise des ONG accréditées euh, exhibe un excellent exemple de, de cet esprit d'équipe et de cette volonté de vouloir partager les expériences au sein du comité de pilotage. Je suis euh, déterminé, je suis engagé à prendre part à ce, à ce challenge parce que diriger euh, à renvoie à servir et j'ai l'intention de servir durablement et de façon fidèle le forum des ONG du PCI, l'Afrique et toutes les régions géographiques. Donc, veuillez voter pour le représentant de l'agent du patrimoine culturel du Mali. En votant pour euh, le représentant de l'agent du patrimoine du Mali, vous êtes en train maintenant de contribuer à consolider davantage le travail d'équipe pour toujours. Veuillez agréer l'expression de mes sentiments de respect les plus distingués et accorder votre soutien à la candidature du représentant de l'agent du patrimoine du Mali. Merci, j'apprécie. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Seko. Would ever, anyone would like to ask a question, maybe? This is your possibility. Doesn't seem so. So thank you very much for the presentation. And thank you also for keeping the time. And I'm very happy to present you the next candidate from Arab States region. So we have, from that, we have Mohamed Mohamed Lemine Bejo from Association Maritaine pour la sauvegarde du patrimoine culturel immatériel. Sorry, my French is horrible, but probably you can pronounce it much well better than me. So I'm very glad to give you the words. Bonjour. Est-ce que je suis entendu? Oui. Est-ce qu'on m'écoutez? Parfaitement. Euh, donc, je vais devoir parler en français. Vous m'excusez. Euh, de ne pas pouvoir euh, vous parler en anglais. Je vais être euh, bref dans ce que je vais faire. J'ai une petite présentation de mon ONG. Et avant de présenter mon ONG, je vais me présenter. Donc, je suis Mohamed Lemine, secrétaire exécutif de l'ONG Association Mauritanienne pour la sauvegarde du patrimoine culturel et matériel, qui a été accrédité depuis plus de quatre ans au niveau de, des ONG. Notre ONG... Euh, ça, c'est d'une part. D'autre part, je suis facilitateur de la Convention 2003, ce qui me donne la possibilité de pouvoir travailler dans plusieurs pays, notamment en Algérie, au Maroc, en Tunisie, euh, en Libye, euh, Djibouti, je, les îles Comores, dans le cadre de la Convention, et de pouvoir mobiliser euh, des communautés au niveau de ces pays, en plus de notre pays. Euh, comment faire pour vous donner ma présentation Je ne suis pas... Vous pouvez me... Je voudrais faire une présentation PowerPoint. Si vous pouvez m'expliquer, à se partager. Oui, vous mettez euh, partage d'écran en bas, à, en bas au milieu de l'écran. Euh, ok, ok, ok. Ouais, mais... Partage d'écran. Donc, ouais. je vais dans mon bureau, oui. c'est ça. Vous cliquez dessus. Oui. Et puis là, vous allez avoir la fenêtre qui va apparaître là. Et après ça, vous avez une fenêtre. Et puis après ça, en bas à droite, vous faites partage d'écran. Vous voyez? Partager, oui, mais, mais 
donc, de toutes façon, je suis en train de, de, de lancer mon, mon, mon... Excusez ma présentation. Ma... Euh, donc, je, je, je pense qu'il y a trois points sur lesquels je, je vais insister. Euh, premièrement, c'est de pouvoir euh, lever le grand défi que nous avons, à savoir faire adhérer le maximum d'associations ou d'ONG euh, dans le cadre des activités du forum. Pour cela, je suis en train de travailler à, au niveau euh, de la Mauritanie à faire un réseau qui a effectué certaines activités euh, pour, pour, pour le réseautage au niveau national de l'ensemble des, des associations actives dans le domaine du PCI. Nous travaillons aussi avec d'autres pays arabes actifs dans le domaine pour dans le même domaine. Donc euh, partage. C'est la technologie qui ne nous facilite pas les choses et le réseau n'est pas très parfait. Euh, si vous cliquez deux fois là, on... ok, c'est beau. Oui, on voit. Vous voyez maintenant Oui, on voit, oui. Parfait. Donc, oui. Les, les, les objectifs de notre ONG, c'est la sauvegarde du patrimoine culturel, c'est la sensibilisation au niveau local, national, euh, dans le domaine. C'est le renforcement des capacités des communautés pour la sauvegarde du patrimoine, c'est l'assistance aux différents intervenants en matière de la Convention, c'est de développer la coopération entre les différentes organisations. À cet effet, nous avons réalisé euh, des outils de communication pour la vulgarisation dans les langues populaires, c'est-à-dire dans les langues nationales, ce qui permet de rapprocher la Convention au niveau local. Nous avons participé à l'animation de plusieurs ateliers de formation dans le domaine de l'implantation, de l'inventaire, de la nomination des, des quatre cycles connus. Nous avons participé au niveau national à l'élaboration de la loi nationale qui prend en compte le patrimoine culturel et matériel. Maintenant, la loi dans notre pays, elle intègre, grâce à notre assistance à l'État, euh, la dimension immatérielle. Nous avons, euh, par, par, par la suite, nous avons participé à l'élaboration et à l'inscription de, de, de plusieurs éléments en 2019, 2011, 2020, tous ces éléments qui ont été présentés par le pays, notre ONG a, avec la collaboration des autres ONG locales, travaillé dans le cadre de ces dossiers auxquels nous avons été, été associés conformément à l'esprit de la Convention 2003. Nous avons euh, participé à l'élaboration de certains rapports, donc le rapport de la mise en valeur de la Convention 2000 qui a été présenté en 2017, le rapport de l'État pour l'épopée, pour la sauvegarde, les, des, où nous avons participé à l'élaboration des demandes d'assistance, nous avons le, pour la réalisation d'inventaires, toutes ces activités nous avons vues. Ici, on voit en image certaines activités de notre ONG au niveau des jeunes dans des écoles. Nous essayons de, de les contacter, de diffuser le, la convention euh, dans, dans, dans ces milieux. Euh, ici, vous voyez, par exemple, on expose la convention dans le cadre des activités dans d'une activité nationale et nous sommes actifs dans ce domaine. Ici, vous allez voir que nous travaillons un peu dans la presse locale et tout ça. Tout ceci dit, c'est qu'au niveau de notre, de notre association travaille dans le cadre de la mobilisation et de la sensibilisation des différents intervenants, surtout au niveau des communautés et au niveau des, des ONG. Maintenant, par, par rapport à ce que je pourrais euh, apporter de de moi. Ce que je pourrais apporter, c'est qu'avec mon expérience dans le domaine de la formation, avec mon expérience dans le domaine de l'intervention dans, euh, dans, dans tous les, les, les États que je visite, surtout les, les États arabes, je pourrais euh, participer à améliorer la visibilité de la, des ONG arabes et dans le monde africain aussi, dans le monde francophone, 
envie d'une plus grande représentativité. Je sais que ça, c'est un effort sur lequel nous devons fournir beaucoup, beaucoup, parce que mobiliser les communautés, mobiliser les, les ONG nécessite un travail euh, d'équipe, nécessite un travail euh, de, de, de collaboration et un travail qui, est, euh, qui, 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 qui nécessite une présence et euh, une collaboration euh, parfaite. Je crois que compte tenu du temps et compte tenu du fait que vous allez pouvoir traduire, euh, je vais m'arrêter en attendant que vous puissiez me poser les questions qu'il faut. Did everyone get that or would someone like a short a short translation? Yes. Laurie, vous pouvez un peu si nécessaire de faire un, une, une traduction, s'il vous plaît. I don't know, Monica, do we have time? Uh, it's up to you. Uh, we could have a minute of uh, summary if it's possible. Would okay, you very quickly. Uh, Thank you. So he, he uh, for those who, for out of courtesy, for those who are not French speakers or maybe didn't understand, uh, uh, just like to um, underline that he, uh, first of all, gave us a, uh, an idea of some of the work that he's doing in his ONG in, in Mauritania. Um, he's worked, he's organized workshops. Uh, he's, he's uh, he mentioned, first of all, that he's a, an official capacity uh, build, building facilitator for UNESCO and has been for several years. Uh, Uh, he's done. Um, he's given us an idea of some of the work that he's done in his uh, in his country through his own, his uh, NGO, uh, organized workshops, uh, has done inventories, uh, has um, also introduced um, uh, teaching of ICH in schools, uh, and uh, uh, has also been involved in policy making with uh, the state. And uh, in terms of uh, his second point was that. Uh, he wanted to um, increase the participation of the already accredited NGOs in the Arab states. Uh, uh, and his third point was that he would like to increase the number of accredited NGOs in the Arab states because uh, there are, I think that is, he mentioned that that was one of the regions in the world where there was the less, the smallest number of NGOs. So that's it. In a nutshell. <laughs> thank you so much for the summary. And thank you so much, Mohamed, for your presentation. Do we also have any more questions for Mohamed? Are there any? If not, I'm happy to proceed. So thank you very much for your presentation. And we're going to another region now. We're going to continue with the Eastern European region. And I'm very happy to give the first word to Fazil Kazimo from Ashik Shamshir Cultural Center Public Union. Thank you, Monica. Just a minute. You see my uh, screen? Yes. Dear electoral board members uh, and NGO representatives, uh, I am honored to introduce myself to you at the ICH NGO Forum. Uh, I thank uh, the electoral board uh, to give me this opportunity. Uh, I am the head of international relations department at Ashok Shamshir Cultural Center Public Union that is registered in Azerbaijan in January 2010. Our NGO is working with uh, the internally displaced uh, people of Azerbaijan. I grew up uh, in an internally displaced family too. Uh, I am a social and cultural activist uh, from IDP community of Azerbaijan. Uh, I completed my primary and secondary education at a refugee school um, uh, in Azerbaijan. Uh, after graduation from the high school, I was awarded uh, the presidential scholarship uh, for my exceptional achievement. Uh, 
in university entrance exam. Uh, so I can admit that the education totally changed my life. Now I am uh, studying a PhD at Istanbul University. I am also the project manager of uh, UNESCO Ashik Shamshir uh, Chair on folk music heritage and storytelling traditions that was established uh, at the Institute of Folklore of Azerbaijan. Uh, Azerbaijan is very famous, uh, visitors amazing musical heritage. Uh, it has very comprehensive music education system. Uh, then I was eight years old, I began to learn playing guitar instrument. Uh, at a, uh, it is a traditional musical instrument of Azerbaijan. Uh, I got uh, a music education for five years. So from my childhood, I have been involved in the promotion of intangible cultural heritage. Uh, Ashok Shamshir Cultural Center Public Union is an uh, NGO uh, specializing in the safeguarding of cultural heritage of uh, IDPs. Uh, our NGO uh, has been operating for 12 years. Uh, since 2013, I have been responsible for the international relations uh, for the, uh, of this NGO. In 2014, I prepared an application file for the accreditation of our NGO to UNESCO, uh, to UNESCO ICA's committee. In 2016, our NGO was accredited to UNESCO. Uh, this year, uh, I uh, submitted our first review report to the UNESCO Secretariat. Um, since the uh, application uh, for the accreditation of our NGO uh, uh, in 2014, um, uh, I started to learn the best world practices in safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage in order to apply them in our country. Uh, for this purpose, I participated in numerous uh, UNESCO meetings, uh, seminars and forums uh, held in different countries. Uh, in September 2014, I participated in the forum of NGOs in uh, official partnership with uh, UNESCO. Uh, uh, that was held in Sotopol, Bulgaria. It was the first UNESCO event that I participated in. In November 2016, I participated in the 11th session of UNESCO uh, Intergovernmental Committee for the Safeguarding of ICH that took place in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I joined discussions in ICH NGO forum and shared my views on importance of preservation of cultural heritage in conflicts uh, regions. Uh, dear Fazil, sorry I'm interrupting you, just to inform you that we are still seeing the same slide with the title Who I, Who I Am. Probably you are already on the next one. Uh, uh, participation in UNESCO events, that is... That's what I don't see, I'm sorry. I still see the first slide that you shared. Do you see now? No, sorry, no change. No? No. Do you have two screens? Just a minute. Oh, yes. That is so much better. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. You may continue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in June uh, 2018, uh, I participated in the seventh session of UNESCO General Assembly for the safeguarding of ICH that took place in Paris. I joined the ICH and Geo Forum and delivered a commemoration speech on the 125th anniversary of Ashok Shamshir, the prominent Azerbaijani folk musician of the 20th century. Uh, uh, there are uh, other UNESCO events that I joined. Uh, as you see, I have actively participated in UNESCO events organized by the UNESCO Secretariat and National Commissions uh, for UNESCO. Uh, I am also uh, an author of a few national and international projects uh, in safeguarding and promotion of ICH. In 2018, I began to uh, provide technical support to Azerbaijan universities uh, to participate in UNESCO uh, Unity program. I prepared a project proposal um, to establish a UNESCO chair at the Institute of uh, Folklore of Azerbaijan. In December 2020, the UNESCO Ashok Shamshir Chair on Folk Music Heritage and Storytelling Traditions that was established at the Institute of Folklore of Azerbaijan. Uh, it was the first UNESCO Chair on Storytelling in the world. Uh, now I'm, I'm providing uh, technical support for Azerbaijan National Conservatory to establish a UNESCO Chair on Inclusive Arts Education. Uh, in order to increase access to arts education for visually impaired musicians in Azerbaijan, I prepared a project uh, lighting up the darkness with music. The short film that introduced our project was shown on uh, 11th International Forum of NGOs in, in official partnership with UNESCO that was held in December 2019. 
Uh, in 2020, I participated, uh, I prepared a project proposal titled Capacity Building of Azerbaijani Art Professionals in the Field of Inclusive Education to increase the project, uh, the practices of inclusive arts education in Azerbaijan. In 2020, I also initiated a project in the implementation of UNESCO practices uh, in, uh, in the study and promotion of Ashagar that was jointly funded by Ministry of uh, Culture of Azerbaijan and Azerbaijani Agents of State Support to NGOs. This project aimed to study the development of Ashagard since this inscription on the UNESCO representative list and to identify the list of activities that needs to be implemented in the following years. Uh, I'm also, uh, contribute to, I also contribute to the preservation of novus traditions in the world, which has uh, been inscribed on the UNESCO representative list uh, since 2016. For this purpose, in 2019, uh, we held a novus festival in Vienna, uh, Austria, in cooperation with Azerbaijani Turkish Culture and Businessmen's Association. Uh, now I want to tell you uh, what I can contribute to the steering committee. Uh, considering my experiences with UNESCO Unity and Program, I can develop cooperation between UNESCO, uh, between ICH NGO Forum and UNESCO Chairs specialized in ICH. I'm also planning to promote cooperation with an, uh, regional groups between accredited NGOs. Um, and seeking for funding mechanisms for this type of cooperation. Um, for this purpose, I will closely work with national commissions for UNESCO and carrying out lobbying activities for development of cultural policies that will increase opportunities of cooperation with accredited NGOs. Uh, I will also contact with accredited NGOs operating in Eastern uh, European region, uh, but uh, not, uh, not participating in the ICH NGO forum I will encourage those NGOs to join the ICH NGO forums meetings. Uh, then uh, I will closely work with government agencies uh, to promote uh, inclusive arts education and to create more opportunities for disabled musicians. This is a short summary of my work in ICH field, and I hope my story finds you well. Thank you for your support. Thank you so much for the presentation and thank you also for keeping the time. Uh, do we have any more questions for Fazil? Doesn't seem so, so thank you very much thank you. for the great presentation and I'm very happy to continue again in the Eastern European region. And I'm gonna present to you, the next candidate is Diliana Yorgova from National Section of TIOF Bulgaria, the International Council of Organizations of Folklore Festivals and Folk Arts. So Stiliana, the floor is yours. Thank you. Can you hear me? Dear members of the electoral board, dear members of the steering committee, dear NGO members, bonsoir. C'est un plaisir pour moi de vous saluer aujourd'hui et de faire cette présentation. My name is Tiliana Yorguva. I am Secretary General of National Section TIOF Bulgaria. TIOF is the International Council of Organizations of Folklore Festivals and Traditional Arts. And I'm the Director of International Folklore Festival Veliko Ternovo. I have been dealing with this since 2002, when I started working for our National Section as Youth Representative and involved in the organization of our International Folklore Festival Veliko Ternovo. Let me tell you a few words for my city. Veliko Ternovo is the ancient capital of Bulgaria, one of the oldest towns in the country. Today, this is the cultural and the historical capital. This is the city where future meets the past. City like this definitely needs a great and remarkable cultural calendar, which our festival is part of since 1998. It used to be a dream back then at the time, only with few volunteers, this adventure began. Why such festival? Because of the necessity to show to the world that our Bulgarian folklore is an enormous treasure that defines our originality and spirituality. Our history and traditions are something we should be proud of, and the beautiful nature and historical places in our country and town are something that definitely must be seen. And on the other hand, to invite in our great city messengers from around the world to present their culture, traditions and art to our audience to make people aware of the beauty and richness of the world folklore. I believe during the years that we have succeeded to bring the world on our festival stage, 
to discover the cultural traditions and values of known and unknown nations, to travel around the globe by the means of folklore, and to make this festival one of the biggest and highly estimated cultural event of that kind in Eastern Europe. Starting in the organization of the festival and then turn to be its director, it's a huge challenge for me, as well as passion and pleasure to deal with the whole organizational process and to see the results, to be part of something that needs to increase, to develop, and to see how it's turned to be a great and valued cultural event is really a huge satisfaction. Our festival has a CEOF statute. CEOF is the biggest, I can say, organization, non-governmental, in the world that deals with folk and art festivals. It's official partner to UNESCO, accredited to the UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage Committee. Since 1970, when the organization was created, it works for the safeguarding, promotion, and diffusion of traditional culture. Through the activities, our national section, as part of the international CEOP organization that I have been Secretary General, aims to the following main objectives, to promote the intangible cultural heritage through forms of expressions such as dance, music, traditional games, rituals, customs, food, and other, to serve the objectives of UNESCO, to support the activities of its members. In our case, National Section of Seattle Bulgaria works, works with more than 600 Bulgarian ensembles, and we organize in every four years national review of the ensembles in different categories to evaluate their artistic level, their development as whole, and to give the best ones the statute of representative ensemble of our national section for participation abroad in different festivals. This is one of the major activities our section is doing to work and to collaborate with the mostly known festivals in our country, such as festivals in Varna, Dobric, Razgrad, Dorkovo, Svištov, Silistra, as well as our international work. We have been elaborated and involved in a well-developed now network of festivals covering all Eastern Europe, such as festivals organizations in Croatia, Hungary, Poland, Turkey, Cyprus, Serbia, Slovenia, Montenegro, North Macedonia, Albania, Romania, Greece, and many more. There are 53 festivals part of this festival network. We have contacts and working as partners, organizing participation of different folk and traditional groups from the continent and outside. This is a great opportunity for us as organizers of such events to present part of the elements included in the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity and as well some of the good safeguarding practices of ICH. Our national section among the first 36 NGOs invited to join and accredited to provide advisory services for the safeguarding of ICH to UNESCO in 2010. I have been participating in annual meetings of the Intergovernmental Committee of UNESCO for safeguarding of ICH in Istanbul, Abu Dhabi, Bali. I have been as well invited and participated as a guest lecturer to numerous international conferences held in Greece, Indonesia, China, South Korea, sharing my experience as organizer of international events and some of the major issues of the safeguarding the intangible cultural heritage. Moreover, our NGO works very close with UNESCO Regional Center in Sofia. From its creation in 2012, we participated in the work of its General Assembly and we have been partners in organization of many cultural events, conferences, seminars. Our national section organizes international scientific conferences during international folklore festival, Veliko Ternovo, which give us the opportunity for meeting and exchange information and good practices in promoting of ICH between groups, festival directors, and folk ensembles. We have had two conferences organized under the patronage of National Commission of Bulgaria for UNESCO with the financial support of the Regional Center for the Safeguarding of ICH in Southeastern Europe under the species of UNESCO. With all the countries presented in the UNESCO Regional Center, we have connection and we are lucky that this center is based in the capital of our country. The term cultural heritage has changed content considerably 
in recent decades, partially owing to the instruments developed by UNESCO. Traditions, living expressions, inherited from our ancestor and passed to our descendants. All these elements are something we as festival organizers have the duty to present to the large audience. And this is what we actually do. Because the intangible cultural heritage is an important factor of maintaining cultural diversity in the face of growing globalization. During the past 23 years now, we've had the opportunity to present numerous elements from the intangible cultural heritage list of humanity, not only to our stage, but to the audience of all the festivals from our festival network in Eastern Europe that we are part. Uh, and those elements are such as marimba music from Colombia, the capoeira from Brazil, mariachi from Mexico, and many, many, many more. We presented as well Bistritza Babi. This is the unique archaic polyphony from Shoklok region, one of the Bulgarian elements included in the list that make us proud. Bistritza Babi received this year on a special ceremony the award our national section gives each year. It's called Zlatna Kubilica or Golden Yoke for outstanding and contribution to the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage of Bulgaria. Broadly speaking, folklore embraces all local cultural expression from the traditional and popular legends to the regional food. Through the meanings of our festivals, we share a message to the world to preserve the traditions through the means of music, dance and art to be tolerant, to comprehend, and to respect all cultures. It will be a pleasure and honor for me to become a member of the steering committee and to share my experience and to continue working for the preserving and popularizing the intangible cultural heritage. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stiliana, and thank you so much for respecting the time. Uh, do we have any questions for Stiliana? Lucky you, no more questions for you. <laughs> so you're free of charge, charge. Thank you so much for your presentation. And I'm really happy to introduce you one more candidate from the Eastern European region. So the floor is your Tamara Nikolic Teric from the Association House of Batana. I hope you can join us. Uh, Tamara will join us from her car probably. Uh, hi, good evening, dear colleagues. Uh, first of all, uh, please excuse me for communicating or yeah from my car unfortunately i had to travel for family reasons but i didn't want to miss the opportunity to present the association i'm representing so thank you very much for this uh, opportunity and hopefully you can you can accept my apologies i will share my presentation um so the association house of batana um, um is an association dealing with maritime heritage I'm the program manager since 2014, and uh, except of being um, the program manager and the only person who is actually a cultural heritage professional, I'm also the bearer of the traditions that uh, we are trying to safeguard for future generation, which is um, boat building and all the different traditions related to it. Um, I would like to um, start the presentation or present our association based on how we see our contribution uh, to the steering committee and the forum in general. So we are an NGO uh, and the project started as a bottom-up initiative of people aware of the sensitive nature of traditional boat building and ICH in general. In 2016, it was included in the UNESCO Register of Good Safeguarding Practices as an ecomuseological practice. Uh, through years, uh, we developed activities related to revitalization of boat building as asset for sustainable economy and uh, participative management models and influence cultural heritage related policies on national level. So um, we need, uh, we see the need to present, enhance and share these experiences with our communities and professionals in order to build bridges, new collaborations and more effective policies and practices. We really see the need to maybe include more communities within the forum um, and not only cultural heritage professionals. So this is uh, the first reason why we uh, applied and presented our candidacy to the steering committee. Uh, here are a few photos um, of the community I'm working with. As I said, I'm not only the program manager, but also one of the bearers 
and I'm really proud that I could uh, keep the traditions of my grandfather and still have the boat today and try to share these experiences with my colleagues um, that whose um, uh, experience and um, professions range from fishermen to historians, cooks, and biologists. So we are a multidisciplinary uh, community-based um, NGO and practice. The second um, thing we, we think it's important and we could com contribute to the work of the steering committee is related to the transmission of knowledge. So education and transmission in this formal and informal uh, context. Since 2015, Batana's core mission is the transmission of knowledge uh, through European projects with co communities and partners from Italy, Slovenia, Hungary, uh, Poland, Austria. Uh, we developed three and distributed three didactic sets. We have this regular Batana rides with fishermen and school children trying, trying to breed, uh, build bridges between these different generations. Um, and as facilitator for the implementation of the 2003 co convention, I co-authored the newest materials for the integration of ICN in schools, uh, entitled Teaching and Learning with Living Heritage, a resource kit for teachers. So also on this personal level, I could contribute in um, the area of education, which in Colombia seemed to be uh, quite of, of quite an interest for uh, our members of the forum. Uh, here you can see a bit of um, activities conducted by our association. The third uh, topic or area we are quite, um, we have experiences is the sustainable, is sustainable tourism. We believe that tourism is um, uh, a topic that is very difficult to address and it's, it has many challenges but it is very important to not to be taken to left to be left aside so we developed different cultural tourism programs based on bearers ideas and their possibilities we were awarded the first prize of the european cultural tourism network in the intangible cultural heritage category in 2019 and we are advocating for balancing visitors and hosting communities needs and aspirations in keeping small scale projects that respect the everyday dynamics of hosting communities. So we really see the need to address the issue and challenges within the tourism sector on regular grounds and among different communities respecting their specificities with the final goal to de develop uh, capacity building materials available for wide stakeholder networks. Uh, here are just a few pictures. Tamara, I'm really, really sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but as you have mentioned a few times here, you can see then I'm really sorry to tell you that we haven't seen anything. Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't. You had a very nice flow, so I'm very sorry to interrupt you. No, sorry, you had to do it before. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. It's amazing. I would just, you have heard, and now you can see, hopefully. Yes, thank you. Maybe you can also put oh, just a few pictures screen. so you can see. So yeah, sorry. thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry to bother okay. you. <laughs> education activities um, and sustainable uh, tourism. So sorry. Um, the fourth uh, area we are um, working with is knowledge about nature, uh, focusing on climate change and biodiversity. Um, we have been awarded a 15-month multidisciplinary project aimed at identifying local knowledge on uh, marine life uh, of the Rovina Carpelago, which is a Natura 2000 protected area. Analyzing the, uh, we are analyzing a 100-year-old scientific archive on marine life in Rovine, so working with the scientists on marine biology and developing participatory climate change and biodiversity monitoring and evaluation systems, and finally empowering children and young decision makers to understand the knowledge and promote marine coastal biodiversity as source of life. So within the UN Decade of Oceans, we really believe that uh, combining um, traditional knowledge on marine life with science can be really something that should be more um, uh, present in the work of the forum and we could contribute in, in those areas. Uh, the project was um, uh, sponsored or um, by the UNESCO Regional Office for Science and Culture in Europe. So we are now working on it and really focusing quite a lot, a lot of attention on 
um, knowledge and um, skills related to um, knowledge about the sea. Um, sorry. Finally, so you can see a few pictures from the field work uh, within our um, archipelago of Rovin and the presentation of the project with our colleagues um, from the science uh, sector. Finally, um, as a curator in the Ethnographic Museum of Istria and the program manager at the Museum Batana, I can contribute um, on topics related to museum and intangible cultural heritage. Um, thanks to the collaboration with the Intangible Cultural Heritage and Museum Project, I co-authored a book entitled Museums and Intangible Cultural Heritage Toward the Third Space in the Heritage Sector, a companion to discover transformative heritage practices for the 21st century um, with uh, colleagues uh, from around Europe. So um, I really believe that um, museums, uh, um, professionals are more and more um, interested in finding these linkages between safeguarding measures and museum functions. So this can be also an area to be improved through our, um, through our activities. And finally, um, my PhD thesis was based on intersectionality. So I'm uh, very much um, involved in gender studies and uh, on a personal level, I could also contribute in um, this area. Uh, I would like to finish my presentation with a suggestive picture of Batana boat, which is the symbol of our association, showing the relationship between men and nature and uh, the and cultural heritage, local knowledge to be used for a um, more sustainable future. This is in a way um, our message that we would like to convey within the work of the forum. So thank you, thank you very much for your attention and for your time for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tamara. As we still have a minute remaining of your time, is there something you would like to show from the beginning of the presentation that we didn't see before maybe? Well, you already talked it all, but maybe you want to add something with the photos or anything. Sorry. So yeah, maybe I, I would just like to show you once again the members of the association and really emphasize how important it is to balance um, the participation of communities and um, heritage professionals within the forum. So we would really like to yeah, advocate for more, more balance in that segment. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Tamara. It was a very interesting presentation. And uh, I'm really happy for all of the candidates from Eastern European region. And I'm very happy to be neutral, not to <laughs> have to make this hard decision of these three all very interesting and intelligent people. So thank you so much for the presentations. And now I'm very happy to go to another continent. So I don't know if any evening I've been into so many different living rooms all over the world. And uh, so I'm very happy to go to the Latin American and Caribbean region. And the first candidate I'm gonna, uh, who's going to present herself is Claudia Hurtado from the Crafts of Chile Foundation. Buenos dias, Claudia. Muy buenos dias. Bonjour a tous. Je vais faire la présentation en français. Merci, Monique. Bonjour, merci pour votre accueil. Je suis chilienne et j'habite à Santiago du Chili. Je suis maîtresse d'histoire, euh, j'étudie à l'Université catholique du Chili et j'ai un diplôme en administration culturelle de, de la même institution. Ma vocation humaniste et amoureuse euh, pour l'artisanat m'a amenée à être en lien étroit avec eux. J'aime particulièrement travailler sur le terrain, connaître la réalité des artisans et travailler en collaboration avec eux. Je suis très passionnée pour mon travail. Je travaille avec de nombreuses communautés indigènes et j'ai obtenu de très bons résultats, car je sais que le respect et le professionnalisme sont la clé pour la confiance. Compte tenu de mon travail, cette semaine, j'ai été nominée comme l'une des 100 femmes leaders du pays à cause de mon travail social et patrimonial. 
C'est à partir de mon expérience de terrain, de recherche et de travail avec les communautés que j'ai travaillé en écrivant dans la rubrique « Made in Chile » du journal El Mercurio, le plus diffusé dans mon pays sur les questions d'artisans et d'identité artistique et culturelle. Et puis, j'ai fondé Idea Artesana pour développer des projets d'identité et d'excellence afin de révaloriser l'artisanat comme un secteur économique et comme élément fondamental du patrimoine culturel. Depuis l'année 2018, je suis la directrice exécutive à la Fondation Artesanias de Chile. Je travaille directement avec de plus de 2000 artisans sur tout le territoire chilien. Je passe une bonne partie de mon temps avec eux, dans leurs ateliers, dans les foires et, événements, et en autres événements qui nous organisons et dans les expositions au Chili et Latino-Amérique où nous où nous allons ensemble. La Fondation Artesanière de Chile est une ONG euh, qui a après un peu moins de 20 ans, qui a construit un réseau avec 2500 artisans, dont 78% sont, sont dans les zones rurales, 84% sont femmes, euh, et 5, euh, 56% appartiennent à l'un des neuf peuples d'origine du Chili. Notre fondation est connue pour nos magasins de commerce équitable, mais aussi nous développons également d'autres actions de sauvegarde comme la formation, la recherche, la transmission et nous collaborons à la médiation entre les collectifs et les institutions publiques et privées. Euh, en relation concernant les défis futurs identifiés par le Forum, nous représentons une façon de travailler qui croit aux alliances du tiers secteur avec le public et le privé. Notre marque de fabrique est de générer des alliances fortes et soutenues basées sur la reconnaissance mutuelle des capacités et c'est quelque chose dans lequel nous pensons pouvoir collaborer pour surmonter la résistance que certains États peuvent avoir travaillé avec les ONG. Nous pouvons démontrer par des exemples concrets le positif du travail associé. Montrer que cela est possible dans un pays en développement avec un financement limité et qui fait partie de l'hémisphère sud peut être un moyen d'intégrer d'autres organisations non gouvernementales des régions sous-représenté. Comme je, euh, je l'ai mentionné plus tôt, un domaine important de notre ONG à voir avec le commerce équitable de l'artisanat. Cela nous a donné une expérience importante dans le marketing qui a toujours été lié à la valorisation du patrimoine, du patrimoine culturel et matériel. Notre travail est principalement les porteurs avec lesquels nous travaillons. Nous, nous croyons que nous serons en mesure de collaborer activement à l'amélioration la des communications et au développement de cette stratégie de marketing que le Forum a identifiée. Euh, notre proposition concernant le diagnostic posé par le Forum relève de nombreux domaines dans lesquels notre collaboration peut peut avoir un impact positif. Cependant, au cours de ces années, nous avons pu imprimer un saut excellent au travail effectué. Cela signifie avoir une capacité de prioriser ensemble afin que les résultats des travaux aient un standard de qualité qui facilite l'évaluation des résultats des travaux. Merci beaucoup. C'est ma présentation. Je suis très contente de pouvoir euh, compartir, de, de pouvoir être avec vous aujourd'hui. Merci. Uh, can I be, can I ask also Laurie here to make a short summary at the end? It seems okay. it's more of your speciality. Uh, yes, I, I'm not a professional translator, but I'll do my best. Uh, uh, okay, so... Um, This is uh, Hurtado, um, Claudia, Claudia uh, is the first name. Uh, um, 
uh, said that she uh, has training in, in history and public administration from the University of Chile. Uh, uh, she has been working in the area of arts and crafts for a good many years, um, uh, has worked with, um, has uh, participated in the, in the creation of her foundation of Artisans of Chile. Um, she uh, has uh, indicated that she's worked with many indigenous uh, women uh, as well. Uh, Please correct me if I'm, you know, if I'm if I'm wrong, uh, Claudia. Um, and uh, was nominated because of her work uh, uh, to a prize uh, that was given to uh, the a hundred uh, women uh, leaders in the in the area of social engagement. Uh, uh, sorry, the translation is not so good, but uh, I think you get the the idea. Um, and uh, she she participated in the founding of her NGO. Uh, she uh, works with more than 2,000 uh, artisans across the country um, uh, and um, has done uh, various uh, types of activities with them, including training, transmission uh, of traditional knowledge, uh, capacity building, uh, uh, and also public uh, programming. Uh, that's what I got. I don't know if I, sh should I add anything, uh, uh, Claudia, uh, to this? Uh, No. Pardon me? No, seulement il y a des, des questions ou non? <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, no, so she said she'd be willing to, very happy to answer any questions, if you have any. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claudia, for her presentation. Thank you, Claudia, Merci, for the translation. Do we have any questions? Does anyone want to ask anything? Seems you're also lucky and escape without questions. So thank you so much. Thank you. And now I'm very, very happy to present you another uh, candidate for the Latin American Caribbean region and uh, Martin Andrade Perez. Hi, Monica. Hi, uh, everybody. Good morning, good evening, afternoon, good night. I will be, try to be fast because I guess some of you are, uh, are uh, tired because it's like really late in some time. Ah, I cannot share my presentations. Okay. I will do it without presentation. <laughs> because otherwise I cannot, no, I cannot share my presentation. Share, no. Okay, I will do it without the presentation, but it's okay. So, my name is Martin Andrade Perez. I represent the Erigaye Foundation. Uh, we are based in Colombia. We are a group of anthropologists, architects, archaeologists, historians, biologists, museum professionals, and uh, people of the community in different regions of the country. Uh, the foundation exists since uh, 1985 working at the beginning with archaeology and environmental issues. And in 2003, the, our field has been reorientated around cultural heritage with uh, five, five uh, lines of work, uh, material culture, urban spaces, environment, cultural, uh, cultural heritage observatory and museums. Intangible cultural heritage is transversal to all these uh, lines. Uh, we also work with uh, not only with intangible cultural heritage, but also with the World Heritage Convention, with archaeology. We we work not uh, with, we are not only with intangible heritage, and uh, we work. Uh, our main goal is uh, to strengthen the relationship uh, between communities and groups, the states, and universities and academics. Uh, that's important because uh, in case of being part of the steering committee, I guess we can also do that. We can, uh, we are doing that at the national level and in Latin America and in a Latin American level, but I think that we can, or I can help to do that in a more uh, wide level around the world to strengthen this relationship between UNESCO, communities, NGOs and universities and, and academics. Uh, it's a pity that you cannot see my presentation, but I have here some of our projects on intangible heritage. We have been working since 2003 
uh, with the policies, like uh, assessing the Ministry of Culture in Colombia for uh, the policy of intangible heritage, with the laws of intangible heritage, of, cult of cultural heritage in general, uh, doing inventories, uh, developing methodologies for inventories, doing the police policies for traditional crafts, for uh, traditional food, also doing many nomination files for the national list, for the representative list of intangible heritage at the national level, but also at the UNESCO level, we have done around, I think that the four files for the tree list for the register of best safeguarding practices for the origin uh, uh, list for the representative list. Uh, we have been working uh, with the many different groups around Colombia, and we are uh, we have our accreditation since two thousand and ten. Uh, the UNESCO accreditation. We have been members of the advisory body of the committee in 2010-2011 and uh, since 2017 until 2020-2021 we have been members of the evaluation body. I have been the representative of the uh, foundation in the evaluation body of the ICH committee evaluating the files we finish our mandate as members of the evaluation body this week. Uh, so we have been evaluating the files, doing the files, also looking at how uh, the secretariat, how UNESCO is working, how the communities are working. We work hand to hand with many communities in Colombia. We have a big network of uh, people working on ICH around Latin America, but also here in, 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 in many other mm -hmm. countries, sorry. Okay. Also, we have in 2010, 2011, we worked with the Smithsonian Institution, with the Folk Life Festival, uh, with a big project of on intangible heritage. Uh, I have been member myself of uh, the working group research of the ICH NGO forum. Uh, we have been going to the committee meetings for many years now. Uh, we have been doing also many exhibitions on intangible heritage, always working with the communities. I have been part of many, many of these projects. I mean, I guess that all I have been part of all the projects, project, sometimes as a coordinator, sometimes as a researcher for these projects. Uh, my idea, if I am part of the steering committee, is also to, to, to share this knowledge about how UNESCO uh, works, about how we can just strengthen this link with UNESCO, with the communities, also with universities and academia. I think it is important to think about how the ICH and Geo Forum can, uh, can support the UNESCO mandate, can support the convention, but also how it can be useful for the NGOs. And especially in, in my case, uh, I would like to, to see and to look for more uh, Latin American NGOs uh, being part of the ICH and Geo Forum because we are one of the uh, underrepresented regions in the ICH and Geo Forum, which is uh, kind of weird because we have a lot of uh, elements on the list and a lot of participation of the states, but not uh, not so many NGOs working with the NGO Forum. So uh, our uh, organization has a big experience on ICH. Uh, I also have this experience with ICH. I also have been teaching in uh, two, three universities in Colombia about uh, classes in master, Masters of Cultural Heritage about intangible heritage. And, uh, and that's it. I think I will let it uh, for now.
um, I think that uh, it is important for us as a region to have one representative. I think that both of us can do a very good, a very good work, Claudia or, or I. So uh, thanks for your attention today and looking forward to see you again soon. Muchas gracias. So thank you very much for the presentations. Also, I'm very happy to be neutral in this case also, because we have two so many, two so, so interesting people who would very well present uh, the Latin American and Caribbean region. I'm very happy for you all. And I really, really want to meet you all in person. So I'm really sorry to only see you through the screens and uh, at least we can meet here. So this is at least still a possibility to see and to meet so many interesting people really. And uh, a really a big bow to you all and all the candidates. And I really do wish you all the best in the election process, because I really believe that all of you, you would all be worthy of the position of the ICH NGO steering committee. But as we have also had so many new members coming in during, uh, from the start, because no one really wanted to listen to my super interesting uh, beginning, of course, then I'm gonna also tell it all at the end. So be ready. So at the first, I'm gonna also throw in the chat all the important links that you have to see. You have to register the NGO for the voting and you can do it on this first link and the registration uh, for the voting is open until tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. So it's Paris time, be careful with the timing, of course. And uh, you have to register for the vote and you have to enter the NGO name and the registration number of the NGO and the number you can find by checking your file on the UNESCO ICH website. So please be careful with it and please register. You can't do it otherwise. That's the only possibility to vote. And uh, you also will receive a voting link on the email. Please be careful, check your spam folder, of course. I know all of my emails always go in the spam folder, so, so yeah, not only mine, luckily. And uh, the voting period starts tomorrow morning, so it will start 10 a.m. Paris time, and it will be a possibility to vote over duration of 26 hours. That should be enough for you all. And the voting will end at noon, 12 o'clock, daytime Paris time uh, on the December 15th. The votes are all anonymous as I mentioned before and each NGO can only vote for one candidate per electoral region. So as you have been listening to the candidates, so then we have at the moment one candidate from the African region, we have one candidate from the Arab states region, we have three candidates from the East European region and we also have two candidates from the Latin American and Caribbean region. So there you have to make a choice please. And uh, so candidates receiving most votes will be elected to the steering committee and uh, the results will be announced on Wednesday, so the day after tomorrow during the General Assembly. Uh, and there is also the link for the General Assembly in the chat. So please join and listen to the very interesting results of the election. So thank you so much all for joining us. And I really wish you a very pleasant evening and really hope to meet you someday in person. So thank you very much from all the electoral board. At the moment, we have here also Patricia, and we thank you all for participating and have a very lovely evening.